Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am doing a makeup look where I do like one side of my face using all drugstore products and the other side of my face using all of the high-end luxury makeup products. So there are a lot of videos out there on YouTube, you know, where people kind of compare like some drugstore products and claim that they are the dupes for some of the high-end luxury products. Today I'm going to put them to the test and this is the makeup look that I created. So if you guys can see a difference, you are really good because I personally can't even like up close. So this video is in collaboration with Shopee for their Shopee Beauty Bonanza event that is happening from the 15th of May all the way to the 22nd of May 2018. So this year there are a lot of participating brands like L'Oreal, Maybelline, La Roche Posay, Kinohimitsu, so on and so forth and they are all participating in this Shopee Beauty Bonanza sale that allows you to get up to 80% off their products. So all of the products that I'm going to be using are going to be listed in the description box down below including my promo code if you're interested to get $7 off your $15 purchase. My code is SBBX. M O N G Mong. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna be using the drugstore side on this side of my face and the Lux makeup on this side of my face. So today I'm just gonna be putting them side by side and I'm reviewing them for you guys. I have these two primers with me. This is the Maybelline Baby Skin Pore Eraser. This has always been compared to the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. Let's see how these two wear compared to each other. I like how smooth it feels. It just feels very velvety. I can see it like mattifying my face. The Smashbox one definitely feels a little bit more greasy, but they do feel pretty similar. Both are very easy to apply and very easy to apply. And they are like exactly the same. Wow. I have two really cult favorites over here. This is the L'Oreal Paris 24 Hours. Infallible Pro Matte Foundation and my favorite Nastia Glow Foundation. I personally feel that they're kind of different because this one is very, very matte, whereas the Nastia Glow is like slightly less matte. So I'm just gonna put the L'Oreal Infallible on one side and my Nastia Glow on the other side. I don't know how I'm gonna look like with two different colored uh, foundation. <laughs> on both sides of the face. Ooh, I love the texture of the L'Oreal Infallible. It just makes my skin look very, very flawless and I don't look like I have a lot of makeup on. So the Nasha Glow definitely has a lighter coverage. When it comes to the finish, I can't really tell the difference really. Except that this one does better at covering the redness. So I have with me the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer as well as the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I've tried them both for myself and I can personally vouch that they are very, very, very similar <laughs> in terms of the quality and like how they wear on the skin. Literally blends like a dream. It is so creamy and buttery and I love that it's very lightweight. You can see how creamy it is as well. But if you know heavy concealer is not your thing, I would say go for the Maybelline Fit Me. So I've heard long ago about the RCMA No Color Powder, which is like such a big, 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 big tub. And they've always said that it's a dupe for the Laura Mercier Setting Loose Powder in Translucent. So this powder is very fine and it just makes my skin look so flawless. They are exactly the same la. oh my goodness. I literally can't tell the difference at all. So this RCMA makeup powder has been used by many, many makeup artists. It gives you that soft blurring matte effect which is totally like the case right now. My skin looks flawless and I think it is such a great dupe to the Laura Mercier um, loose setting powder at literally the fraction of a price. Alright, now it's time for the brows. This is the Palladio Brow Definer Micro Pencil and they have said that it's a dupe for the benefit precisely my brow. Ooh, it is actually really, really pigmented. Oh my gosh, I love this already. I just wish I got it in a lighter shade. It is so creamy and easy to glide and very, very precise. It lasts really long. It's very waxy and easy to glide. One thing though I have to say, the Benefit Spoolie is definitely much better quality um, when it comes to just like spreading and blending out the brow product because it gives it that kind of 
blurry look. But you can see both of them are so similar. This one definitely gave me like a more bolder brow look because it is slightly less blendable but let's just not be picky here because this is so much cheaper. So I have here with me the LA Girl Ilux Mesmerizing Palette in the shade Eternalize. This has been highly, highly raved by one of my favourite like, beauty YouTuber. Today I'm comparing it to the Tarte Tartlet Eyeshadow Palette. So generally, we are just going to be comparing like the different pigmentation. Wow, it is so good. The colour payoff is just amazing. It's very buttery as well. I wasn't expecting this at all. So, wow, this is amazing. Wow, I love the shade. It's so buttery and very, very pigmented. Then I'm gonna take um, this dark matte brown shade and just go in on the outer corners. Then I'm taking the white colour shade and going around my brow bone. For a drugstore eyeshadow palette, this is the most pigmented white matte eyeshadow. The colours are very similar and the pigmentation is also very, very easy to blend. Overall, I think it is a really good dupe. The white eyeshadow is like exactly the same. Okay, maybe Tarte's one is slightly more pigmented. This is a super, super, super good eyeshadow palette. I am so sold and so happy that I found this. I have these two eyeliners. This is the Maybelline Hyper Sharp Liner, which has been so highly raved. And everyone has been comparing it to the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. Oh my gosh, they look exactly the same. Alright, in terms of pigmentation wise, you can see that the Stila one is still slightly more opaque and black compared to the Maybelline one but the Maybelline one dries faster so I would imagine it to be like a lot more um, easy to control. I think this is a super great eyeliner if you're looking for something to do like a cat eye easily. So the Stila one is a lot more opaque but at the same time, the bristles are also like harder. I, in fact, prefer the Maybelline Hyper Sharp Liner because I think it's easier to use and it's so much cheaper. There is almost no difference at all. So I have here with me the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise Mascara and the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Major Volume Mascara. Oh my gosh, guys. It's like almost identical. They come with like that kind of very fibrous bristles and there's like a slight little curve. It's definitely very volumizing. I don't think you can see that much of a difference really. I think the L'Oreal Lash Paradise is slightly less clumpy compared to my Marc Jacob Velvet Noir Volumizing Mascara. But other than that, in terms of length, in terms of curl, in terms of how opaque black it is, it is kind of exactly the same. You know how some mascaras, when you apply it, right? Once you blink your eyes, like it just kind of transfers to the bottom of your eyes. This is what the Marc Jacobs one would do. But for this, I feel that it's very, very dry and um, it's very comfortable to wear. So you can see, the Marc Jacobs one definitely gave me some uh, smudging. But for this, not that smudge. This is the Bourjois Little Round Pot Blush. And this is the famous Nars Orgasm Blush. This blush has been around for like over 150 years. So it's a very, very timeless. This one comes in a really cute brush inside and a nice mirror. Whereas for my Nars Orgasm, it also comes with a big mirror like this. So from the pen, they look exactly the same in terms of shade. Oh, it's so beautiful and pigmented. The NARS Orgasm is, on the other hand, slightly not that pigmented. Oh my gosh, it's so pigmented. And it's actually really easy to blend. I think the NARS Orgasm blush is a little bit more like subtle because of the pigmentation. But when it comes to the shade and the sheen, from the naked eye, you can't even see the difference. And this one has an added plus. It smells like roses. <laughs> Super pretty packaging. It's so small and handy to just throw around. I have with me the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. And I have the very famous Becca Opal Shimmering Perfector Highlighter. I don't know, I think these two products like don't really need that much explanation because they have been on the internet, like on YouTube for so long. Wow, it is so 
buttery and smooth. It is insane. Oh my gosh, I am really impressed like because it's so fine. So in terms of the formula, I think both of them are like almost exactly the same. Yes, oh my god. I don't know if you guys can see that. I think I found like my favorite drugstore highlighter. It's so amazing. There literally isn't any difference at all um, in this two. So if you're on a hunt for a really good drugstore highlight, go for this one from Wet n Wild. It's so good. So this one is the Wet n Wild Stop Light Red. And this is the MAC Cosmetics Ruby Woo. This is like one of their like cult favorite lipsticks as well. Everyone always talk about Ruby Woo. Wow, it's so easy to glide and the color is just so bright and amazing. The Ruby Woo is more like reddish, whereas for the Stop Black Red, it's a little bit more pink tone. But when it comes to the formula and the finish, the MAC Ruby Woo is slightly more matte, whereas this one is like a little bit more hydrating and has a bit more sheen. It's so easy to apply. I don't even know if you guys can tell the difference. Like, it just looks like just one lipstick. The color is so similar. Texture of it is so similar as well. It's just very, very pigmented. A really nice red. Let's not forget the setting spray. I have with me the Milani Make It Last Setting Spray compared to the Urban Decay All Nighter Pollution Protection Setting Spray. Mmm, it smells nice. So apparently it is a fruit and rich formula that prevents fading, shine and creasing for up to 16 hours. So when it comes to the spray, the Urban Decay one is like slightly more like dispersing. I think the Milani one is a lot more hydrating. It gives me that really nice like shine as well so it really depends on your preference. But uh, price point wise, these two are super like different. I do like how it sets my makeup. It makes it look pretty flawless and it doesn't like move the foundation underneath. Same as the Urban Decay one. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was useful and informative. There are many pros and cons to products you know, out there so it really depends on like what is your preference, whether or not this suits you, so on and so forth. So I hope this video um, helped you guys a lot, especially for those of you who are starting out or if you're a student or if you don't want to spend so much money on makeup, you can definitely check out all of these drugstore dupes because they are so, so, so good and very, very worth the money. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to join the fam, subscribe, like and share and talk to me in the comments uh, down below and I would love to see you in my next video. Bye!